You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash theoptionsinsider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. Gold, crude oil, corn, soybeans, and more. With so many tradable products, the futures options market can be an intimidating place. How can you possibly keep track of the latest trading developments across so many different products? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Welcome to This Week in Futures Options, the program designed to help active futures options traders stay on top of this ever-changing marketplace. Each week, we'll break down the top trades, hot products, volatility explosions, and much more. This Week in Futures Options streams live every Friday at 3 p.m. Central, so be sure to check out our live stream via the Mixler app. That's M-I-X-L-R. Or join our live chat room at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. Whether you're an experienced veteran or a newcomer looking to separate the wheat from the lean hogs, this week in Futures Options has the information you can't find anywhere else. This week in Futures Options is brought to you by Quick Strike Options Pricing and Analysis Software. QuickStrike offers powerful and flexible options analysis and pricing tools via an easy-to-use web-based interface. View prices on outright options or spreads with comprehensive page-level analysis controls. Build trades, manage risk, or explore historical volatility. QuickStrike has you covered with market data reports ranging from open interest to the term structure of volatility. Quick Strike is the perfect addition to your trading toolkit. Learn more about Quick Strike at bantix.com. That's B A N T I X.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Quick Strike One. That's Q U I K S T R I K E One. And now, get ready to break down the latest futures options trading activity. It's time for This Week in Futures Options. All right, everybody. That funky tune. I love that tune. It's a great way to to close out our broadcast week here on the old Options Insider Radio Network with the funkiest tune for, indeed, the funkiest show here on the old network. What a week it has been. Before we get to that, my name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the Options Insider Radio Network. And, yes, you are listening to TWIFO, This Week in Futures Options, a program here on the old network where, as the name implies, we break down all things futures options, maybe a little bit of gold, a little bit of crude, a little bit of beans, corn, lean hogs, milk, dairy, whatever is lighting it up that week, we will break it down there. Of course, you guys can always join us. After the fact, you can subscribe, of course, This Week in Futures Options on your favorite podcast platform, your iTunes, your TuneIn's, your Stitchers, your iHearts, radios, all that fun stuff. Of course, you can always grab our mobile app as well, available for all of the major app stores out there as well to search for Twifo on the app or just get, get our network feed. You get all the shows there. Be warned, though, that's a lot of shows, so watch out if you grab the network feed. Or, of course, if you are available on Friday, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern, we'd love to see you there in the old chat room. And I love you, you guys like to stream in there. Also stream via Twitter and Facebook and everywhere else you guys like to do. And then pepper us with your comments via social media. But however you listen, whether it's via the app after the fact or live or however you tune into the show, make sure you hit us up with your questions, your comments, your insights. We love to hear from you guys. And joining me on the old program today... My cohort, my partner in crime, the futures options yin to my yang, <laughs> Mr. Nick Howard, the co-founder, or I should say founder, of Bantix Technologies and the creator of a little platform we like to use around here quite a bit called Quick Strike. Nick, welcome back to This Week in Futures Options. Hey, man, I thought you were going to call me the futures options yin-yang as opposed <laughs> to the yin to your yang, so I appreciate that. 
Indeed, and you are dialing in actually from the Grand Global HQ, not from Parts Unknown. So that's nice to have you back in the office again. You've been traveling a lot lately. Yes, I am in uh, western Chicago suburbs. Point unknown for those out there. <laughs> Points unknown. All right, let's just dive right into it. It's been a crazy week. I don't know. <laughs> we'll stay away from obviously any political ramifications of the week. Instead, we'll move on into just uh, what a nutty week it has been. Before the markets, Nick, I think we probably should start uh, in the realm of all things metals out here this week because it's just been rocking and rolling uh, all week long, particularly post-election. Uh, we've seen the flights to quality, flights away from quality, into defense. So, so let's start in. Uh, let's start in the in the shiny stuff. Let's start in gold. And again, listeners, you guys can follow along not, not just with the live show at Mixler, but you can also generate your own reports completely for free. Over there at cmegroup.com slash TWIO, T-W-I-O, this week in options. And then, of course, you can see all the same data Nick and I are looking at as we're doing the show. Click around, play around with a little bit. Maybe get to play with some of the quick skew stuff. That's, I think, you get to log into CME for that or quick strike for that. But still, really cool stuff. And if you do that, if you follow along, you'll see exactly what we're seeing right now, that it has not exactly been a banner week for all things a shiny and precious out there. Uh, gold finishing the week down about 80 handles net uh, on the week. So just a huge, huge drubbing, about 6% across the board on the term structure. As you might expect when you see such a pronounced uh, sell-off, you see vol popping pretty much across the board as well. About two, about two points or so, a little bit more than two points, depending on where you're looking out there in the futures. Also seeing some interesting developments out there in uh, in the old quick skew. Again, you guys can find that yourselves by clicking on the data there, the tab that says 25 day RR stands for risk reversal. <laughs> and then click on any of the numbers in there. It'll bring up a bunch of tabs. One of them will say charts. And on the left hand side, you'll see quick skew. Click on that. And you can see exactly what we're talking about as well. And as you can see, probably no surprise, uh, you'll see uh, the puts coming up a wee bit and the calls coming off uh, aggressively. Not, not exactly a surprise for an aggressive move uh, to the downside. People flocking into puts. they got to get something short in gold. So they're diving into puts headlong and they're dumping calls as a result as well. So a lot of action out there in the quick skew. Both ends of the skew moving. Uh, a net result, though, that the skew was pretty much off across the board, about two points, uh, depending on where you're looking. A little more in the front month there in the Dece with about nearly four points. The skew tends to evolve a little bit more rapidly out there in uh, the front portion of the curve. All that accreting to, surprisingly, uh, not as big of a jump in volume as you might think. Only about 3% increase out there this week from a net open interest perspective. Uh, in terms of what was leading the dance, where was the action where was the attention? Surprise, surprise. It was in the puts and it was in the front month in terms of uh, the Dece really leading the charge. About two thirds of the paper this week going up in Dece with 18,000 contracts going up in the Dece 12 half puts. And that was really uh, where the story was told this week. Pretty even paper across the board as well, uh, opening a lot on Monday and Tuesday. A little bit of closing on Wednesday and Thursday, maybe people taking their profits, not thinking the, the slide was going to continue as aggressively as it did. But it wasn't all puts. If you're wondering, hey, where, was there no call love whatsoever? There was some call love this week. The D's 13 half calls coming in actually number two with about 15,700 contracts. The lion's share, surprise, surprise, coming on Wednesday, about 8,000 of that 15,000, nearly half. Uh, coming on Wednesday. The rest kind of scattered. Not much going on today, but only 600 of those calls trading today, probably because they're quite a bit out of the money now compared to where they were earlier in the week. And then number three, the 1,300 calls. So people probably abandoning a lot of those uh, upside call positions, doing it en masse and doing it pretty aggressively, nearly 12,000 of those 1,300s lighting it up for this week as well. So a lot of interesting stuff popping off this week out here in all things precious Nick uh, what was catching your eye this week from a overall gold perspective? Well, I think first off, uh, you know, I always like to go back and look and see what the futures were doing prior to the big move, right? So um, last week uh, or, you know, Monday, Monday and Tuesday before uh, sort of the results started to come in, we were sort of trending sideways and the week prior, we were sort of around the 1280 mark as well. So we were moving along pretty, pretty uh, flat, flat lines from a flat line standpoint, uh, you know, uh, when we did our show the last time. And I think we even mentioned again 
I think we mentioned how we thought that given where we were in the range that buying puts and buying futures was probably a good idea given ball was kind of at a low end of things. And if you were looking to make a play from a volatility level, a range level, that was probably a good idea. So, um, you know, overnight, those probably would have paid for themselves just on the just on the rally up to uh, 13, 37 half uh, uh, on the these contract. But um, I think, uh, you know, uh, what, what's 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 most uh, interesting, and you mentioned it, 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 we're looking, you know, December contract, again, it's 11 days to expiration. So we start to not pay attention to that so much as we, uh, as we discuss on this show, thinking ahead, right? Well, I guess we have a, a week and then a weekend still on it. But, um, uh, as you mentioned, uh, what was a bid for the calls and now it's pretty much, it's, uh, it looks like a smile. I met and and when I and it's more of a smile because it it looks like uh, the calls and the puts are trading uh, the 25 delta calls and the puts are trading at a premium to the at the money so um, or, or or a little bit of a premium so it's not not a tremendous amount of premium but just a little bit of premium so you have a pretty flat part of the 25 delta to 25 delta uh, part of the vol curve and and that really. I think in the I was looking at I think I was looking at Jan like you can go right right now you can do a, a 1200 1250 strangle that's a 35 delta strangle so you can go out even wider to get uh, a pretty flat vol like uh, 1265 um, you know uh, 1185 to get a 25 delta strangle so something like this when you get a pretty flat looking curve you know it might might be might be worth looking at doing a uh selling the selling the at the money and, and buying the wings here because i think even on that 35 delta iron you were getting like 20 or 21 ticks of premium so you're almost covering your whole move um between those two strikes so you know, looking at that just a skew flattening out almost at zero with meaning that calls and puts are kind of balanced out you got a nice even smile, so that means people are sort of waiting for the next direction. And if you are watching the feed at all, or watching the Options Insider uh, Twitter, you're, you're going to see we put out just a difference, even in a two-day difference, from just uh, just the election skew to after the election skew. You really took a, like you said, you you see the big tilt happen. So we put a couple both on the Quick Strike feed and on the Options feed. Mark retweeted those. You're going to see how how the skew changed. So. What's that saying just in general, right? I mean, there's just when when stuff starts to tilt or look look out of line, you got to pay attention. And there's easy ways to pay attention by coming here and looking at the numbers and at least saying, oh, it's worth investigating or it's worth taking a look at. And then um, obviously, you know, looking and seeing what's happening in the underlying and that type of thing. So, I mean, our, our, we're basically off 43 uh, dollars today. So, I mean, we, we moved way down from the overnight high, obviously, and then we continue to slide. And, and a lot of it has to do with, right. There was a, uh, you know, when the, when the market was getting pounded, the stock market was getting pounded, people were flocking into gold. And then after it settled down, people got out of it. Right. So it's that sort of, uh, you know, I'm going to go to my safe haven type of thing. We saw the same thing in the rates as well. So, um, I think from here now, you know, the vol is, the vol got hammered pretty good this week, right? It, it looks like from where it started last week to where it is. So, Gold vol is still pretty low, um, so I think we got to keep an eye on that as well. We're still. Uh, I'm going to look at the Jan here and see where we are from a historical standpoint. There's not much there. It's pretty flat, and uh, if we look at the uh, Fab, again, same thing. I mean, we're really, you know, as much as as much movement as we got, we didn't. In as an end result, we still have a downward trending volatility. So for me, that means you got to keep an eye on that stuff and look for plays that are going to make sense from a from a from a, a, a vol standpoint as well as a you know strike positioning standpoint. So take a look at that. Take a look at the uh, at the wider uh, butterflies to see if or right the 35 and 25 delta iron flies and uh, see if you like those vol levels and um, and like those break evens. You can go build those out on the Quick Strike Essentials for free over on the CME Group website as well. So that's sort of what's catching my eye here. You know we got we I think that. Um, we have to really start watching on this uh, on this downside here. We're at 1225 right now, approximately a little bit below. So, I mean, if we start to uh, spook down at the 1200 level, then I think you know, then I think you're going to see something happen to volatility. But if we sort of trend and move a little bit higher, you know, I think you might see it get a little bit softer. And uh, until we get a, a, a directional move one way or another, but still think it's a good level to get in at this price here. All right, sir, and since, it's, uh, since we're talking metals, let's dive into our surprise product of the week. Do it a little bit earlier uh, than we normally do here on the show, but it's kind of in the same category. It's kind of one that's 
that's kind of hard to uh, to ignore. <laughs> We've seen a lot of movements. It could have maybe filtered in even on last week's shows when kind of the move started. It certainly seemed to be exacerbated this week uh, by a variety of factors, certainly not the least of which being uh, Trump, President-elect Trump's plan to invest a lot in infrastructure. Whenever you're doing that, you need a lot of base metals to do that. And so surprise, surprise, copper uh, rocking and rolling. We've also seen a lot of demand from Chinese speculators uh, over the past week as well. That's been uh, driving a lot of action uh, on, chi- on copper and a lot of the international markets uh, as well. So between those speculators flooding in and now Trump's promise to overhaul the infrastructure, we've seen a decent pop out here in copper. Again, net on the week, uh, the copper contract's up about, future up about 11% close to it over here uh, on, on the CME with uh, most of the contracts up about, again, about a it's like about a, a quarter of a point or so net. Doesn't sound like a lot, but in copper land, that is indeed uh, quite a bit. And what we're seeing out there, actually a decent pop in open interest as well, about 16%. But when you're talking net volume out there in all things copper, again, this is relative. This is a much lighter volume product, so it's not lighting it up to the tune of you know hundreds of thousands of additional contracts. That said, the interesting thing has been kind of more, I think, in just the volatility we've been seeing lining up out there. It's kind of been uh, across the board. Most of the vol kind of popping, as you might expect, given this uh, protracted move uh, to the upside. Nick, I think a lot of people listening out there who come from the equity and index options world just automatically equate any sort of upside movement with a decrease in volatility. One of the nice things about uh, talking uh, commodity options is that we get to talk about different types of skew and different products that exhibit uh, that type of skew. And, you know, we've seen an interesting setup out here in uh, in copper as well as our quick skew is showing us again you can follow along cmegroup.com slash twio look at a lot of this data for yourself we're seeing uh, the puts getting uh, bid up and the calls actually coming off this week which is kind of interesting a net resulting and it kind of kind of depends on which month you're looking at as well where how the skew is shaping up this product trades a little bit differently than you might think only about a third of that volume coming in the actual front month uh, DEES contract. A lot of it actually coming a little bit farther out actually in the February contract. That actually was the volume leader. Uh, not, not the net volume leader, but the number one active strike was out in February. So a lot of different actions, a lot of different things uh, to parse out here. And Nick, we don't have to go too deep in it because we have some other products we want to get to as well. But I know for you, you're like me, we're kind of a lot of these products that we normally wouldn't pay attention to on a week-by-week basis. Kind of been coming up on the radar. Hey, that's, that's the whole purpose of the surprise product of the week is in not. So do you have any thoughts on copper and just the surprising moves we've seen uh, over the past week? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing you got to look at is the fact that, you know, at the beginning of November, we were trading around the $2.20. And then when you when you look at what uh, where this thing spiked up to $2.72 or 70, 72 plus cents. So, I mean, just from a percentage standpoint, that's worth taking note, right? So if, if you're somebody who's got inventory because copper's been in the dumper you're talking about uh you know 22 and a half cents is is a 10 percent move so you basically got a 20 percent move in your inventory that's a huge amount of money when you're when you're talking about people uh you know having that around and i and i had a brother-in-law who was in the in the scrap metal business for a long time and and you know they hold on to that supply be, for for just exact this exact type of reason so you know anytime you get a big percentage move and, and like you said, there's not a huge amount of volume in the options, but the fact that the vol is bid and the vol has stayed bid, regardless of the volume that you see on those options, it still means that there's that there's a potential for pent up demand for that product, right? So I think um, those are the things to keep an eye on. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do a plug here. What's gonna be coming soon down the pike is that we're gonna have vol scans available, so you'll be able to go in there and look and see what has popped the most in a given day across a period of time, both from an expiration standpoint for the day, but then as a constant maturity standpoint as well. So you'll be able to go in in a quick strike and potentially in the CME Group website. And I think more than likely that's the case at 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 for sure within the CME direct integration of Quick Strike, you're gonna be able to do a vol scans and see where those moves were over a period of time. So you'll be able to really get those ideas and and, and vet those things uh, a little bit more uh, easily. But yeah, when you get a, a gigantic percentage move like that, it's it's gonna make people take notice. And the other thing to note before we move on, just from a metal standpoint, is you know, iron ore basically traded up from like 62 and change up to almost 78 and change. I think that was a number. So when you talk about infrastructure, again, in particular, when you when you mentioned your China with the, the copper demand, iron ore is a big um, is a big product for them as well as they start to do development. Same thing with 
um, when, when you're talking about infrastructure in the U.S., right, because you got your rebar and stuff if you're doing roads again, that kind of thing, those things all come into play. So this is stuff we're just going to have to watch. You know, I think the gold and the silver rally for a different reason than the base and the ferrous metals, right? So gold and silver rally because people are afraid, and then the base and the ferrous means that those are going to rally because people are generally optimistic about some, you know, expending in terms of things moving forward from a from an infrastructure standpoint. So it's interesting how the, the two metals can kind of almost uh, um, mean, you know, they're on the, they're the opposite sides of the coin, so to speak, within the same kind of product base. All right, everybody, let's keep on rolling to another hot product here. We got someone chiming in here, the great misanthrope. He says he, you know, he wants to listen to the action as long as he doesn't listen to a crazy anti-Trump rant on the show. So boring. Luckily, we don't do politics here on the show, so you're safe. <laughs> if you want that kind of stuff or maybe don't want it, uh, if you don't want to stay here, if you want it, go elsewhere. Don't worry, we got you covered. No politics here. Just just straight up markets action. All right, let's move on to another product that was lighting it up this week. That is indeed uh, WTI, the old crude, the old Texas tea. We can't go a week without talking all things crude out here. It's kind of been interesting to watch that uh, kind of develop. The narrative going into this week was, you know, how would the election impact that? How would global markets respond? Would crude break out to the downside, maybe south of that 45 handle aggressively, or maybe break out to the upside, get back into that close to the 50 handle range? Uh, Didn't really see net a lot of that on the week. Actually, net ended up effectively unched off about a handle or so, depending on where you're looking out in the term structure. So net on the week, it wasn't uh, a huge move from a, a futures perspective. Of course, we had some intro, intra-week moves, but net on the week, it didn't settle out, didn't amount to much at the end of the day. So we're still in that range of the mid-40 hand, a little bit lower in that front DEC contract, which only has like five days to go at this point. So that one's that one's going the way of the dodo uh, pretty quickly. In terms of vol, vol was creeping up. Again, a little bit of a tick down, also a little bit of a unease out there in the broad markets that's tend to make vol increase and in general we've said before on the show nick was just alluding to gold vol being fairly low in recent weeks so having a tendency to pop we've seen a similar development out here in crude where uh, your oiv which is of course uh, the vixa wti has been in you know record low territory for a while they're close to it and at least for this year 52 week low and then of course has been popping off into the uh, mid to low uh, 40 handles right now and again popping a little bit this week most of the vol across the term structure up about a point to a point and a half uh so that's interesting to watch again coming from a pretty low base point so some of that is is to be expected also we moved a little bit down in the term structure and we saw skew popping as a bit of a result up about a point to about a point and a half a little over two points actually in that front more front portion of the curve again front portion of the curve is where skew tends to rock and roll a little bit more aggressively and again usually when you see uh skew getting bid up usually skew is is quoted in terms of the put tending to be over and that is indeed the case out here in uh, all things uh, all things wti where we see of course and i have seen for some time the structural higher level of implied volatility has been out in the put wing. People are still bidding up puts, and that continues to be the case. In fact, uh, looking at the quick skew, you guys can see this for yourself here. You'll see a lot of the increase this week came from an increase in the puts versus a little bit of a, of a decrease out there in the calls as well. So those two combining to give us a nice little boost uh, to skew overall. And looking at where the paper lined up, even though that front month contract, that D's contract only has less than a week to go, that's where the action was again this week. So it's effectively, it's a weekly there, Nick. So maybe that solves our, our weekly conundrum there <laughs> with WTI. But uh, it was lighting it up to the tune of over a little over half of the paper going up this week, coming in that DEC contract. And uh, the 40 puts are where the action was this week. Nearly 50,000 of those lighting it up with a lot of that opening, including about 20 of that 50,000 coming on Tuesday. So uh, election day, lighting it up for the 40 put crowd, a lot of opening as well, about 6,000 of those 20,000 opening on that day. So uh, clearly a lot of action, also about 14,000 going up on Wednesday. So Tuesday and Wednesday accounted for about 35,000 of that 48,000 total contract. So rocking and rolling out there around election time. Then we drop off precipitously to number two, which is uh, the Dece 45 calls. Not as much interest in those. Uh, only about 25,000 of those going up. The lion's share, about 7,000 going on Wednesday. And interestingly enough, a lot of that being closing paper. So 
Uh, interesting, maybe people were hoping out a little bit of hope for a pop coming out of the election. Didn't materialize, maybe giving up the ghost a bit there on Wednesday. Decent amount pop trading today as well, about 6,000 going up today. So a little bit of action on those 45s. Then we drop off again. Number three is the uh, DS 43 puts. So kind of that lower put strip is where a lot of the action was. And again, that was only about 20,000 of those contracts lighting it up this week. Surprisingly enough, that one actually spiking today. About 8,000 of that 19, almost 20,000 contracts coming in uh, today's session and not as much, only 1,600 on Tuesday and about 4,500 on Wednesday. So a little bit of a flip of the script with the 40 puts, which mostly traded on Tuesday and Wednesday. Kind of interesting to see that there, Nick. Do you think those two would trade a little bit more in lockstep? But that's pretty much not what we saw this week. And then you kind of fall off a cliff as you get to the farther off months with the action. So a lot of stuff to parse out here. Perhaps not net as wild and woolly of a week as maybe some people expected there, uh, Nick, but certainly we had our spots, our moments there <laughs> where things were rocking and rolling. So what was what was catching your eye this week out here in all things crude? Well, I think the first uh, thing to note is we look like at the at the close of Election Day, right? We were down at the lows like 4312, I think, as we hit our low for that week. And then at the end of the week, we're sort of at those lows again. So I think we got to keep an eye on what's going to happen for the for the open or for the open of Globex and then uh, what we're going to see for the remainder of the week. Um, you know, as you mentioned, the 40 put is sort of trading is sort of our weekly, but when you, when you click on the expirations tab on the Twio report and then pull up the weeklies, you see there was virtually no uh, volume in the weekly. So again, still, uh, and that was, uh, and that was a weekly you could have traded that would have was expiring. Um, uh, it's still expiring on Monday versus well, expiring uh, seven days. Yeah. Next Friday versus uh versus five days from now for the December contract. So so I think that, um, you know, what I'm taking away from here again uh, is the fact that the skew uh, became more positive, right? So we took a little bit of heat out of those puts and uh, probably because we spent some time down below uh, the 45 strike and tested the 43 came back. Um, but, you know, if you look if you look across the board, D, um, I'm going to take these weeklies out of here. So uh, I can get a better view of what's going on there. So I'm not um, misstating anything, but uh, but it, you know, just across the board, we come in two vol points on the on the December, two and a half on the Jan, one and a half, one and a quarter. So uh, you, you know, we we are tilting that that vol skew back, not quite, not not a tremendous amount from uh, from a February not standpoint, but that 30 day option that January, it you know we kind of halved where we were in terms of the skew. So, uh, and when we look at that from a quick skew standpoint, and again we gotta we gotta get listeners access to this so they can uh, follow along with us. What we're seeing is you know you're seeing the calls push back towards the at the money. So instead of being beat down, they're they're getting closer and less cheap to the at the money. And the and the puts are are moving toward the at the money uh, from a January standpoint. So, um, you know, I, I think we keep an eye on. We're in a buck and a half on the crude today, right? So our loss for the week is really coming from today's break. So that's that's a break that's going back towards our lows uh, uh, post uh, uh, post uh, election. So um, let's watch and see what happens there. Again, if we if we if you open up and look at the the open interest profile tool, you're going to see that with this big volume in the 40 puts again, um, with expiration in DEC again, um, as Mark mentioned, you know, we're really, the strikes really look like we're buffeting between the 40 and 50 strike again, which again, it, it always feels like a cop out to say that, but that 40 strikes a pretty, a pretty well defended strike. So, you know, my guess is that there's probably some people taking a shot at some shorts out there with, you know, short futures against it. And if we, it just seems it seems unlikely that we would go through that 40 strike just because I, I think from what I remember when when oil was low before I think there was like a $38 break even on people being able to make money $38 barrel break even for people to be able to make money so I'm expecting that we'll hold that 40 not knowing anything kind of being right the agnostic um, market watcher uh, but you know let's keep an eye on on that 40 45 and 50 strikes from an open interest and trade standpoint and let's see how we open on globex with the with the crude uh, in terms of if we uh, if we kind of continue to break down below the 42 and a half mark. Nick, we've already been going for half an hour. It doesn't seem like it. The show just flies by sometimes. So uh, I'll give you pride of place. You get to choose our next product. You want to go ags or I know you're an old school uh, treasury euro dollar guy. You want to you want to start there? I think uh, I think what's important, you know, I don't I don't think I have anything specific. You know, it's hard. It's hard to ever give anything exciting about the euro dollars in particular, because, 
as you you know as you get toward a, a Fed movement type of action, you know where we're trading in the whites and the range of strikes that trade is is very uh, limited. Um, but I think it's important just just to talk about the euro dollars in the ten year just from a, a sheer uh, volume size, right? So I mean when you look, there were ten million contracts that traded this week in the in the euro dollar complex, okay? Uh, four million plus of those were in the whites, uh, the front year. So just a tremendous amount. I mean, 275,000, 450,000, 450,000 in November, December, and January, respectively. And and uh, DEC had a lot of OI come out, and no uh, Nove and Jan had a lot of OI come in. So just want to mention that that again, just tons of liquidity available in the euro dollars. And, and I think this week we got a pretty abnormal movement range from a typical euro dollar. In the old days, you used to get that a little bit more. But uh, but yeah, just a lot of volume, a lot of open interest, increased open interest again, 8% increase, and that included like a 4% decrease in the deck, which is, uh, and I'm not, I don't remember the, exactly the dates of the DCA FOMC, but um, you know, that might be the case that those are, that that is expired before that FOMC meeting, but wanted to point that out. And then on the 10 year, uh, I'm going to jump over there real quick. Again, same thing, just uh, 10 year had a 27 plus percent change in open interest. So that's just tremendous amount of, of, of trade there. And uh, ultimately we're only down like, uh, like three points in the 10 year, which is a decent amount, but we, our range there all week was pretty, was pretty crazy. So we were all over the place. We started at 130 before, you know, before the election result. I'm sorry. We started at 130 before the election results came out. We went up to 131, which isn't that much of a jump. And then we all break all the way back down to 128 and down to 127. So, you know, um, you didn't see of that big of a pop in volatility there because from a standpoint of just trending in one direction, you're not going to see so much, but you know, a lot of movement there if you were, if you were long the right stuff, but there is trade in those products. So I just wanted to point that stuff out. And again, I think uh, one, one last one, cause I always feel compelled to talk about the edamame being, you know, it doesn't look like there was much that happened here. Uh, and when you look at the net change uh, in the price for the week, but, uh, but the beans had, uh, had uh, quite some movement, you know, starting out the week at like ten dollars, up to ten twenty, almost back down to ten, up to ten fifteen, back down to nine eight nine eighty five, back up to ten twenty, back down to nine ninety five, back up to ten fifteen. So, I mean, we talk about our rent versus range versus our daily change. So, still, and then we had a nice big gap here, like a twelve twelve cent gap, um, uh, today even. So, again, you're looking for something to trade. Lots of liquidity there, 8% change in open interest. We're starting to roll into these old crop options now with uh, these Jan, Feb, March, May, and July because the Nova is off as the, as the new crops are now these, the new crop tra tra starts trading as old crops. So a um, lot going on, a lot to watch still because, you know, especially when you, if you're kind of not looking and you see, oh, beans are only down three, three points. But when you look at what happened, there's a lot of stuff going on. You said it well, sir. And I said we are coming up against it. I think we got time to squeeze in at least, uh, at least been an exhausting week, I know, for us and certainly probably for you as well, Nick. But we think we can squeeze in uh, one quick listener question. So without further ado, let's go right on into the futures options feedback. It's time for your questions, comments, and insights. It's time for futures options feedback. Submit your questions at twitter.com slash options. Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, StockTwits.com slash Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com. You can also submit your feedback via our Options Insider radio network mobile app, available for iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire devices. You can even ask your questions live every Friday at 3 p.m. Central via our Mixler chat room. So grab the Mixler app or just search for Options Insider at Mixler.com. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com. All right, everybody. we got time for a little bit of political commentary aside. Don't worry. Not going to get into that. <laughs> Those of you who are afraid for some reason uh, that everything this week has to be political. Not this show. 
and not this network, certainly. Uh, maybe maybe an After Dark show or something like that, but not this one. <laughs> All right, let's move on to, uh, i got a question here from Tom. Tom Chase. This one sounds like it's right up your alley, Nick, so I'll let you run with it. He says, can you explain more about QuickSkew? What is it and how do I get it? Is it available for free on the CME site? Well, maybe I'll kick it off really quickly, even though I said that to you, Nick. <laughs> but uh, this is, of course, what we were just referring to earlier. And uh, to me, I think for my two cents, uh, it's one of the cooler tools that I play around with on the QuickStrike platform because so many times, and I've said this before, so many times SKU is just quoted as this one bland number. SKU is up one point or it's down three points. And that number by itself, it's informative, but it's not doesn't tell you the whole picture. And that's why seeing how SKU develops independently, because remember, the call wing and the put wing, same month, but they kind of move independently depending on what's going on out there. That tells you a lot more about what's happening out there in the product, the intention, the paper flow. And that's kind of why I like the quick SKU. So that said, that's my two cents on it, Nick. But it is your your product after all. So why don't you explain to, uh, to Mr. Chase here exactly what it is, how does he get it, and is, is it available for free on the CME site? Yeah, Tom, well, thanks for your question. So Mark and I cheat a little bit because he's looking in our development environment and, and I'm, you know, because of my login level, I could see things a little bit more deeply than a lot of the users can on the free stuff. So it's currently not out there and available yet. Um, although um, we are talking to the CME about having some sort of limited time frame version of the quick skew out there. So more likely than not, that's going to happen. And I, and I don't do that to try to get people to come in and register for, for our thing, although you can register for a, it's actually not even out in the register trial version yet, because I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm struggling of with the best way to present it and, and how to make it most useful to people. But in any case, the idea behind it, and we, we continue, and if you, and if you mention us, we'll, we'll tweet out some stuff so you can get those, you can get those charts. If you, if you say, Hey, show me something for, for, for this contract and in this, in this product, I'm glad to push it out there. In fact, Anybody who's listening, anything you ask for, if you don't see it in the free stuff, I'm glad to put it out there. And you can ask as much as you want, and I'll put it out there as much as you want. So it's not like we're trying to hide it, but we're just trying to make uh, make the best move to, to so it gets out there and utilized and it's understood as best as possible. So in any case, the, the idea is, like Mark said, is you know you usually get a SKU number. You got it's like a plus four to the call. If we we do call minus put on our SKU, right? So if it's four percent, and you know that the call is four percent greater than the put but what you what you don't know from that number is whether the you know whether the call is rich to at the money or the or if the puts rich to at the money or cheap or if they're both rich or if they're both cheap right so you can't you can't really tell what the relationship is with the quick skew in the chart it's meant to it it, it takes the percent it, it makes it a purely a number so it's just really a percent rich or cheap to the at the money so if um if we're saying our if we say our quick skew call is like a 5% rich, that means it's 5% rich to the at the money. So if the at the money is trading, let's just say a uh, uh, hundred uh, of uh, its volatility is a hundred, just so the percents are easy, then the call would be trading at 105. And if the, if the put were trading 5% cheap, that means it would be trading at 95. So the spread would be 10, but, but, but it now at least you would know that we would, we would say something, it would be like a, what we're going to end up doing is showing something that's like a five capital C, which says, Hey, the call is trading 5% rich to the, at the money volatility and five small P. So the puts trading 5% cheap to the, at the money. So everybody has a really good handle on what the, at the money volatility is. So, but if I tell you 5% rich and 5% cheap, then you immediately know just by taking percentages of that, the money volatility, where the call and the put stand. And what's nice about that is it lets you look at, see, it's not just the relative distance between the volatility percent but it's the distance the actual width and distance between each other in relationship to the at the money so that's the idea behind the quick skew and what we're finding is if you watch and i'll tweet out some stuff later you're seeing that these that these things sort of occasionally they'll stay wide like in the crude you'll see that the puts are bid over the calls and it stays wide like a channel but then you'll see like in the beans they kind of cr crisscross and so when it was wild and crazy the calls were really bid and the puts are really offered and now that sort of switched a little bit in the gold it even switches some more so the the idea and intent is to give people uh, a means to look at the skew and and possibly put on some trades based on the fact that hey this is where it is right now historically it looks like this on average it looks like this so maybe it lets me pay attention um, to where it, not just trading you know not just trading at the money volatility but paying attention to the 25 delta the 15 delta we 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 measure all the deltas five through 45 for all those things so shoot me shoot me a note 
um, you can even even DM me at, at Quick Strike One, no C in the Quick Strike uh, on Twitter, and I'll gladly help. And and I want to shout out to the Lonely Trader uh, um, because I know he's the one asking the the questions about the politics stuff. Him and I had some uh, messaging going on the other day, but I appreciate you listening. So thanks very much. There you go. You broke it down for them, listeners. You guys can find it uh, just really quickly if they if they just want the quick skew. Do they have to? Can they get it on the essentials, or is that on only on the pro version? No, it's not anywhere yet. You get you are a special member a special, of the Quick Strike special, Club. Super special. So, I thought it was on. I thought it was on the pro. Okay, maybe maybe it hadn't trickled down. No, it's yet. not. I, no, it's it's just because I'm I, I'm I'm I've been struggling with exactly because it's got to be explained. So I just probably it's been sort of my lack of of wanting to explain it in a way. I, it's got to I got to make a video about it. And once I make a video about it, I'll put it out there. But I will say this: it's more than likely going to be available in some form on or free on the CME Group website, okay? So that's more than likely gonna be the case. But like I said, um, Tom Chase and everybody else out there, if you guys wanna see something, I will tweet as many charts as you wanna see. So if you ask, you will receive. That's kinda how I've always approached it. So I'm glad to give out the information and then get some feedback about it. So if you want something, let me know and I'll put it out there. I'm glad to do it. I like that. You know, I'm a big fan of the quick skew. That's probably one of my favorite things on there. I think you probably just make a whole service around that. I think people would, would flock to that. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, so good question, Tom. Thanks to everybody who joined us and who wrote in. Unfortunately, that's going to do it for this episode of This Week in Futures Options. There it is. That's what we were waiting for. <laughs> when that music comes on, that means our journey, our sojourn through the world of futures options has unfortunately come to an end what a journey it was this week crazy town this week i be product lighting it up we were doing live specials of our volatility view show a couple of times during election day maybe we we'll have to do that for this show pretty soon nick as well when some of these commodities uh, start lighting it up intro week maybe we'll do some special quick hits dive into something going on in crude or gold or soy whatever the whatever the case may be that day and uh, and light it up a little bit for some special quick hits we did that on volatility views this week and it was really popular particularly around election night maybe we'll start doing that for twice for two i just talked nick into something <laughs> so <laughs> no commitments there yet and of course interesting stuff in gold and in wti and in all the products we hit on today uh, including uh, some questions about quick strike but before we go Mr. Nick, you guys are always working on cool tools, widgets, and things coming down the pike. What is coming down the pike over there in the land of Quick Strike that we can look forward to? Okay, so I got a little bit, a little bit longer pitch today since uh, some of this stuff came up. So first thing, we released a new, um, a new tool on the CME Group website this weekend called the Cross Correlation Tool, and there you could go and look at the benchmarks from an underlying volatility and actual volatility. Uh, uh, from a 30-day vol standpoint and see how the products relate to each other from a, what do they correlate, not correlate, no correlation, that type of thing. So that's out there. So if you go to cmegroup.com slash quickstrike, no C, you'll see all the tools. Look for the cross-correlation tool, okay? Um, secondly, there is, if people are just interested in looking at historical volatility, we do have a special tool called Quick Vol, and that has five plus years of of liquid CME product, historical volatilities with all the SKUs, with seasonal stuff, all that kind of thing. And more than likely, Quick SKU will be available there before it's available anywhere else. So that's a nice little separate, completely different add-on tool as well. Um, and then uh, keep an eye going forward. There's probably going to be some vol scanning and future scanning tools available on the CME group website in the near term as well. And that, what will that entail? That means for instance, you'll be able to go out there and say, show me uh, the 30 day volatility in all the benchmark products, rank them and what's changed the most, rank them from top to bottom and it'll be ranked by expiration uh, and et cetera. So you'll be able to see volatility ranking, underlying price ranking, open interest ranking, that type of thing. So just keep an eye, CME group.com slash quick strike. Um, there's always going to be new stuff going out there, and I think the tool set's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger next year. And then, like I said, to Tom and the rest of you that are listening, we really appreciate you listening. But if you want to see something, even if you want, like, even if you say, hey, Nick, I'd like some historical data, I'll send you an Excel. So just ask for it. I'm glad to help you guys out. There you go. Hit him up over there at Quick Strike or just follow him on uh, social media, Quick Strike without the C. So Q U I K S T R I K E 1 on Twitter and indeed on Stock Twits. Or while you're there, follow us at Options over there on Stock Twits and 
on Twitter as well so you can keep up to date with all of our latest shows. And if you haven't done so already, follow us along on Mixler so you know exactly when this show goes live. If you couldn't make this week, don't worry. You can catch a podcast whenever you get your favorite pop, favorite. I should say wherever you get your favorite podcast programs. You can tell the week is coming to a close here, including iTunes and TuneIn, all those fun places. We'll tune out the links afterwards so you can subscribe directly. And on behalf of Mr. Nick and indeed myself, thank all of you out in the listening audience for downloading, streaming, and subscribing to the show. Of course, we're sending in such great questions. Keep them coming. And we'll see you next week right here on This Week in Futures Options. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by Quick Strike Options Pricing and Analysis Software. Quick Strike offers powerful and flexible options analysis and pricing tools via an easy to use web based interface. View prices on outright options or spreads with comprehensive page level analysis controls. Build trades, manage risk, or explore historical volatility. Quick Strike has you covered with market data reports ranging from open interest to the term structure of volatility. Quick Strike is the perfect addition to your trading toolkit. Learn more about Quick Strike at bantix.com. That's B A N T I X.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Quick Strike One. That's Q-U-I-K-S-T-R-I-K-E-1. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com. 